So everybody, next video we're going to be doing a bit of recording and we're going to be running through the monitor panel across the front of the machine here. Um, just before we get started, I'll just make note of the fact that up here on the meter bridge, all of the inputs have the SRL button engaged, which means that they are um, uh, the gain is set to a standard reference level of unity gain. So with a calibrated test tone, um, those meters should be showing at zero dBU. Now, I'm going to start first of all on the left hand side with the test oscillator just to get a bit of an understanding of um, how the um, signal flow works in the machine. Now, what you firstly notice that I've got um, all the monitoring is set to inputs. That means that I am monitoring the input to the machine. Um, and more specifically, the uh, the start of the input chain, which does also then include where the tos test oscillator gets connected into the circuitry of the machine. Now, at the moment, we're currently set to the line input, which means that um, the it's not actually referencing the test oscillator. This is the inputs to the machine is coming from the line input at the back of the machine. So where I've got um, all of my connectors into the back machine. Now, next step on the test oscillator is a one kilohertz tone. Right. Now you should be hearing that coming back through um, the recording here. And what I have done is I've got the output of the tape machine uh, connected back into Logic. So I'm recording um, one of the outputs of Logic at the same time as I'm making this recording. So what you'll notice then with the one kilohertz tone playing, my reference tone is that it's metering up there right at zero dBU. And if I turn it off, the meters go back to zero. Well, sorry, infinitely negative input level back to one kilohertz. Now, every single one of them is showing as um, one kilohertz tone because that same signal is going to every single channel of my machine to the input stage of every channel of the machine. Now I'm going to switch across to 10K. I'm going to do this very briefly because it's quite a high pitched and nasty noise. There it is, 10K in all its glory. Again, you'll notice similarly that this is metering at zero dBU because I have calibrated my machine. Um, so that the 10k tone is also at 0 dB. Now I'm going to switch across to the external oscillator. You can see that it's connected in down here. Uh, and what I've done is I've patched in some um, audio from Logic. I've routed it through into the machine, um, into the external oscillator. This is a pink noise source. Um, sorry, not from Logic, from, uh, from another test tone generator. Um, program that I've got on my computer. Uh, and what you'll notice is that the level there is not at zero dBU, and that's just because of the reduced level that I'm outputting from the computer. Um, so that's just a quick run through of all of the different test tones, and I'm just going to switch back to the line input. Right, now, now every single input to the machine is referencing the individual input channels, one through to eight. So anything that's connected to channel one will record onto track one of the tape machine, so on and so forth. Now, what I might do is that test tone that I had before, I'm going to patch that into uh, channel one of the tape machine. And you can see there that it's metering up the top. Oh, that's good, okay. So what we can do then is we can um, uh, that I can now, you can see that, that that test tone is coming through into the machine, but just into channel one. I can repatch that across to channel two of the tape machine as well if I wanted to. Um, and I believe you're probably hearing that back in the computer at the moment. And I'll unpatch it. And there we go. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to record something onto the machine. And what we're going to record is test tones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just record one kilohertz test tones. Uh, I'm going to switch the machine, all of the inputs into ready mode. Now they are armed for recording. So when I do hit record, 
um, it will record onto each of those channels of the machine. Um, and I'm going to also quickly flick this onto the 1K test tone. And you can see every single channel is metering the one kilohertz test tone. Um, I've got the input, all input selected, which means I'm monitoring the input section. I'm just going to take a step back for a second here. Depending on which of these buttons I select will determine what signal is being monitored on the VU meters at the top here and also at the headphone output of the machine here as well. Um, and it will also dictate what is being output on the back of the machine. Next, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a recording of a one kilohertz tone. Now, we're just going to talk about the monitoring panel of the machine here. What you'll notice is that I've got every single one of these switches set to ready mode. That means it will record when I press the record and play button at the same time. If I have them set to safe, it's not going to record onto those channels. Now, here we go. Let's record a one kilohertz test tone. And I'll stop, switch back to line. So now we're monitoring the line input. I'm going to rewind that tape back to the start of the test tone recording. And I'll play it back for you. Select all repro. So that's now selecting the reproduce head or the playback head. And I'm just going to put everything back in the safe mode so it doesn't accidentally record. And I'm going to play it back and you should hear that one kilohertz test tone playing back. Cool, right. Now, what you'll notice is that all of the VU meters are metering at zero dBU, which was exactly the level that we were recording that turn uh, one kilohertz test tone. What I'm also going to do is quickly rewind and play it back again. And you'll notice as it starts to play, it kind of does a little bit of a wobble. And what that is, you'll notice as I do that again, is that there's tension coming on and off the tension arm, which means there's tension coming on and off um, the tape, which means it's traveling across the heads at slightly different speeds, which is why I get that little speed wobble at the start. Cool. Now, we can also play back that one kilohertz tone off the record head. Now I'm playing back off the input. Now you'll notice when I've got input selected, no audio is playing back off the tape machine because at the moment we're monitoring the input only. And because there's nothing being sent to the input of the machine, we're set to line, which is which is you know looking at the input of the machine. We're not we haven't got any of the test tones coming through. We don't have the external oscillator connected. Um, and there is when I'm playing back, there's nothing to listen to. Now you will notice that I've still got the 1K, uh, sorry, that the um, the pink noise coming through on channel one. So if we just repatch uh, channel one there across into, let's see. Da, 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 da. All right, here we can see we've now got the tape, uh, the, sorry, the, the monitored input with that pink noise. So that's still there on the input. If we hit the um, the all cell rep, which is the record head, you'll notice that we're not metering anything here because when we've got this selected, what we're listening to is everything that is going onto the record head. And so if we put the machine into safe mode and we put the 1K test tone on, all right, you can see I've got 1K test tone selected. It's not showing up here on the input. If I quickly go to input, you can see it and hear it. Um, but now when we re-record, it's you'll now what's what we're playing back from the record head is what you can hear. There you go, there's our 1K tone.
cool. Um, similarly, we can also listen to it off the playback head. So now we've selected all of the playback heads and we can hear the one kilohertz tone um, as it's being recorded playing off the playback head here just after the record head. What I'd like to do now is to give you a bit of a demonstration of some multi-track recording um, which I'm going to do by playing a track that I've recorded in Logic. I'm going to bounce it out of Logic as eight individual tracks and onto the tape machine and then straight back into Logic. Um, you'll see the tape machine uh, in action and you'll also see the project in Logic as it plays out um, on the ex already, already recorded tracks as well as the new tracks are being recorded back into Logic as well. Um, so there'll be uh, a video recording of that. Um, the track is available on Apple Music, Spotify and YouTube and I'll put links in the description of the video. Um, so sit back and enjoy the excitement of bouncing a song out of Logic and onto tape. 